Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Hope you've had an awesome day. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and supporting the movement towards sustainable energy, towards really a sustainable future, and not just sustainable, but an exciting future, a better future, and more importantly, I mean, a better future for our kids, our family members, and the people that will come after us. Now, here are five facts on the state of the US electric vehicle charging network that you might find interesting. Now, obviously, President Joe Biden says he wants to expand the US charging network for electric vehicles significantly, and a key part of his agenda to curb greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector and combat climate change comes from doing this. So here are five facts about the US EV charging network. Charger types. EV chargers are classified in the United States in three categories, level one, level two, and DC fast chargers. Now, level one chargers use a regular 110 volt outlet, just like standard home plugs, but they take a long time to charge a vehicle battery. They are considered a solution by some to get charging into older apartment buildings, allowing residents to drive 30 to 40 miles or 50 to 65 kilometers on an overnight charge. Now, level two chargers offer higher power output and they use a 240 volt outlet, just like clothes dryers or air conditioners. They are used in residential and commercial settings such as shopping malls, parking garages, and they can top up an EV in about five hours. DCFC allow for the fastest charge by allowing direct current into the battery without first converting it from alternating current, or AC, which level one and two chargers use. DCFC chargers use a 480 volt outlet and can top up a vehicle in under one hour but they are costly to install and less prevalent than level two chargers. And not all EVs can fast charge with throughput limited by hardware and software and also by the batteries. Realistically, you don't want to be fast charging your batteries all the time because it leads to battery degradation. But charger economics. Well, level two chargers cost between 2,000 and 5,000 US dollars to install with many subsidies available for residents and businesses to cover the upfront cost. Fast chargers are significantly more expensive, requiring more than 100,000 US dollars per station in upfront capital. You can just imagine how much Tesla has invested in building out their 30,000 fast charger stations all over the world. Now, providers will recoup those investments by charging higher rates, while charging at home costs around 16 cents per kilowatt hour, unless you've got solar, in which case it's free. Public level two chargers cost around 44 cents per kilowatt hour and fast chargers up to 59 cents per kilowatt hour according to PWC analysis. That gives you an idea on the price difference. Way better to charge at home. Way better to charge at home using solar panels if you live well in about 90% of the United States. Now EV owners who rely on public charging will face significantly higher bills than those charging at home. Of course, altering the total cost of ownership calculation for EVs. And that's one of the reasons why it can be difficult to have a cost of ownership comparison because it really depends on where you're charging, what state you're in. If you've got solar, you know, how you charge, what time of day you charge, there's so many variables that go into it. So what about charging standards? Well, while level one and level two charging uses a standard connector that works with all EVs, there is no such standard for fast charging. Now, as a result, car makers have installed different charging connectors on their vehicles, with primarily Japanese manufacturers using one connector and US and European car makers another. Tesla has developed its own unique connector. It sort of had to do this when it first started out. It really should be the standard, I believe, because really they were the first ones to start making the car chargers en masse. But fortunately, Tesla offer adapters to allow Tesla owners to charge at stations other than Tesla's supercharger network. But Tesla's supercharger network will actually become available to everybody. Tesla CEO Elon Musk in July said the company would make its supercharger network available to other EVs later this year. All you have to do is buy a little plug. It doesn't cost much, maybe 50 bucks. And then you can use Tesla superchargers. But of course, you need to log on to their app and probably pay a higher rate than what Tesla owners will pay. 
So what about current networks? Well, the United States currently has a total of 43,000 public EV charging stations and around 120,000 charging points, according to the US Department of Energy data. Of those, the vast majority are level two fast chargers. Now, if you own a Tesla or if you own any EV later in the year when the chargers become available to everyone, you'll realize that Tesla chargers are generally better than the others and generally they have a faster charging speed. More of them are DC chargers. Chargers are distributed very unevenly though across America, with California having nearly the same amount of charging stations as the 39 states with the lowest count combined. Crazy. Now, EV supportive policies by other states, particularly Colorado, Utah, and in the Pacific Northwest and the US Northeast, have expanded charging stations on a per capita basis in recent years. Now, the European Union has nearly 275,000 EV charging ports, according to data by the European Alternative Fuels Observatory, or around 62 charging points per 100,000 inhabitants. The United States has roughly 37 ports on the same per capita basis. These numbers are just, um, by the time you read these, they'll be totally wrong because obviously they're old data for me and then the data will be even older for you by the time you watch this video. The truth is charging ports are being installed daily by the minute almost in the United States and in Europe and in fact in other countries as well. So this, these numbers are going to be constantly changing because the number of charges built out every day is increasing by the hundreds, if not the thousands. So what about the charging industry? Well, there are more than 300 EV charging companies globally, including nearly 100 in North America. Many are less than five years old and few are more than 10 years old. Of them, eight companies have gone or agreed to go public in the past year through SPAC or SPAC back reverse mergers, which are a bit funky, including EVGo Inc, NUV or NVVE, ChargePoint and Volta charging in the United States. Investors have poured more than 2 billion into EV charging startups, according to PitchBook, with most of the funding flowing in the past five years. As people have started, or companies have started to realize what's actually going on. EVs are gonna take over the market, whether we like it or not, it is happening. Corporate investors in EV charging startups come from a range of industries, including car makers such as Toyota Motor Corporation, Daimler AG, oil and gas companies including Shell and Chevron. Very smart pivot here from the oil and gas companies. Get into EV charging. They have to do it. Tech companies such as Qualcomm Inc. and eBay Inc. as well. Now, in addition to this, many charging stations are also subsidized or run by local governments or electric utilities. Now, if we're going to adopt electric vehicles in any meaningful way, we need the kind of infrastructure that can support ever larger chunks of the population, making that switch. Like most big problems, there's no magic bullet solution. Instead, it's going to take a number of smaller initiatives, all working in tandem to get all the nuts and bolts snugged up tight so everything runs like it should. Now, that's where the Regional Electric Vehicle Midwest Coalition will hopefully come into play. On September 30, 2021, governors of five Midwestern states, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, all signed a memorandum of understanding to co-develop a regional framework to accelerate vehicle electrification in the Midwest. Really good news. Now, like most MOUs, this agreement is non-binding and any state can leave at any time it likes, if it chooses to do so. That said, the goals of this particular agreement include the following. Acceleration of medium and heavy duty fleet electrification through coordination of charging infrastructure, particularly along commercial corridors, as well as standardization of regulatory schemes, support the region's leadership in EV research and development, engineering and manufacturing, with a focus on assisting those that are historically disadvantaged, advance an equitable data-driven transition to EVs for all communities to reduce emissions, keep development within communities sustainable. Now these goals are great, and what this all boils down to is that EV infrastructure in these five Midwestern states, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota and Wisconsin, is about to get a big boost. Now what these five states have done is actually join a coalition of 15 other states, including Washington DC and the province of Quebec that are moving to address in the United States that are kind of joining together, banding together 
to pro- not only promote EVs, but to actually put money into investing in the infrastructure that the United States needs for EV adoption to really start taking off in the same way it has in other countries like China and Europe. Now, of course, one of the big issues in the United States for EVs to take off is simply availability of vehicles. That is a huge problem in the United States right now. And it's one that is being addressed by companies like Tesla. Obviously, Tesla has so much demand that many of their models now have a six month wait list, even in spite of the fact that they're increasing prices constantly to try and tamper that demand and mean that make it so that people don't have to wait six months. What does Tesla need? Well, Tesla needs to increase production. They're doing that with their Texas Gigafactory that's going to be up to probably triple their production over the next couple of years in America. But they need more than that. Tesla needs Ford to do their bit. They need GM to do their bit, Rivian. There's other companies coming on. I think you'll find that over the next five years, there'll be much more choice. BYD, apparently, the word is they may be coming to the US market as well. There's going to be a huge amount of choice in the United States. It's got to increase by a factor of 10x over the next five years. And that is good news for American buyers of EVs and just Americans in general. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you've learned something. Chuck a comment in the comment section below and tell me what you think about the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.